Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's junior info session. My name is Brett Gritzmacher, and uh, this is my ninth school year as principal. It's uh, pretty crazy. It's already been nine years. Uh, personally, I had a son graduate last year uh, from BC. He's now at Alabama. I've got a junior son here and an eighth grader at Wisconsin Hills. Uh, my wife is a kindergarten assistant at, at Burleigh, so we're, uh, we're all in on Elmbrook. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty great being able to be uh, obviously the principal here, but it's also pretty cool to have your, your kids at your school as well, even though occasionally it makes it a little awkward for, for me and my son, but uh, that's something that's uh, over, over time, it gets better and better, certainly. Uh, but uh, very fortunate to have a, a great leadership team here as well. Uh, Dominic Bauer, he's, this is his fourth school year at BC. He's also the go-to person for L, I through Z. Uh, is Carolyn in here? Yeah. Oh, there's Carolyn. Carolyn, and this is her third school year. She is A through L, E. And Don Kurth is actually in the, the library. He is in charge of uh, athletics and activities. And he has a glacier hockey meeting tonight. So glacier hockey, there's... Uh, kids from 12 or 13 different schools being in the library tonight. So that's that's where he is. So he's the go-to for, for activities and athletics um, as well. On the bottom, it talks about servant leadership. And what ser servant leadership is, is that we are here for you. We're here to, to help, obviously, the students. We're also here to, to help the staff uh, and do everything we can to, to help them achieve their goals in the classroom and set them up for, for success uh, beyond BC. You know, there's an old thing, you don't hear it as much, but I heard it more when I was a kid that the high school is the, the four greatest years of your life. And yeah, I mean, I, I certainly hope that the time here is great, but uh, really, I don't, I don't want your life to max out at 18. I hope there's some, some good stuff after that. So we're hoping for, for greatness, uh, not only here, but uh, really your greatest years will be beyond high school. Um, something that uh, started last year with uh, all the logistics that we needed to do with in-person learning and virtual learning were BC updates. Uh, I'm continuing those this school year as well. Uh, my goal is to have them sent out. Uh, I schedule them to send out at about five o'clock or five o'clock on Sunday night. I know all of our inboxes are full. Uh, we get a lot of information, a lot of things coming at us in this world. Um, and <clears throat> Certainly, school is, is something that, uh, <clears throat> as parents, we need to, to be informed and manage as well. So if there's one thing that uh, you read in terms of announcements on a weekly basis, if you could take you know five to ten minutes looking that over, uh, the updates I provide a, a week at a glance as to what's going on, and then there's some other information that, that uh, parents really need to know. I send it to students as well, because um, they, you know, as they get older, you know, your kids are juniors. You know, you think back to when they're in elementary school, they'd bring home that folder and you'd get the folder out of the book bag and look at the folder and sign it and send it back to the teacher. That, you know, certainly we're here to, as parents, guide our kids, but really we want them more and more taking charge of, of their future. Uh, because, like I said, my son's in, in 12 and a half hours away in Alabama. And I mean, it's kind of, they're on their own, so to speak. Um, so we need to start. Um, having them and demanding that they become more and more advocates for themselves because in a very, very near future, that's going to be what they're, they're doing. Additionally, what you'll receive either uh, Sunday or sometimes teachers even send them out before the week is over is a week at a glance. And that is something that really is a snapshot that teachers put together. Should be just a Google slide. Um, and it's kind of the 20,000 foot view of what's going on in the class. It has the UBD in there. The UBD is the curriculum. Uh, so if you have ever questions as to what, what this class is about, you can check that. Also has the, the learning targets for the week and then any assignments or big assessments or quizzes that are gonna be there. Here's four screenshots from my, my junior son's uh, classes. So, so look for those as well. And uh, really, the, the goal is that uh, it really keeps you up to speed, not only at the school level, but what's going on in the classroom level as well. And all parents have access to Canvas. I'm not sure how many access Canvas. Uh, students and staff are in it every day, every block. Um, I think the, the activity from, from a parent 
standpoint is uh, much, much less, but this will give you the, the overview of those classes. This is the, the big dates uh, for the year. You know, BC in terms of the amount of events that we have is, um, you know, as juniors, you know, you, 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 you've seen uh, the amount of things that go on in the school. Uh, but these are the, the big things. We got a PDA, PD day coming up on Monday. We have school dances, parent-teacher conferences are just around the corner. We're going to continue to use Meet the Teacher virtually. Uh, had great success last year. Teachers loved it. Parents loved it because it's very, very convenient. Things start on time, end on time as well. Uh, so that information will be coming out in the near future to get signed up for, for that. AP exams, that schedule is already set by the college board is in May. And the juniors, uh, the big day for juniors is the ACT for juniors, and that is March, and that'll be here at BC, uh, and that's part of the state testing. I believe this is our seventh or eighth year where juniors take that test at school. A lot of kids, that'll be the first time they take it. Some will be the second or third, um, but it's been a, a great experience for, for kids. <clears throat> Find that uh, in the school setting that they're the most comfortable, that uh, they typically do, do really, really well. Um, and the counselors will talk more about that. Uh, but those are those are the big events. I'll I'll send all this out. Don't feel like you need to write this down or even take pictures. I'll send this slide deck out to you um, in the very very near future, or I'll be in the weekly update. Um, also, <clears throat> another thing that's coming up, you know, fall sports is in full swing, has been for about six weeks. Um, but winter sports is just around the corner, so there'll be a winter sports info night. Mr. Kurth will lead that starting at seven o'clock on October 11th, starting here. And then these are all the sports that will go to breakout sessions um, for, for the teams. Uh, so it'll be about an hour, maybe even a little bit less, but that'll be important if you want to play winter sports to come. They'll talk about uh, tryouts, other expectations, um, schedules as well. I'm gonna turn it over to Carolyn Hahn. She's gonna talk a little bit about attendance, Carolyn. Um, so just briefly on attendance, uh, we do really care about attendance here at Brookfield Central. We know that it is closely tied to academic success, um, but it's also really closely tied to a student sense of belonging here at BC, the relationships that they build um, as well. And so um, we really want to make sure that kids are in school every day, every class on time. Now we understand that things happen and there's reasons why students cannot be in school. So we just ask that you either call us, leave us a message to let us know, um, or if email is easier, we also have an email address where you can just let us know the reason for why your child is out of school. Um, as juniors, it's especially important to make sure that you are checking your attendance in Infinite Campus. Uh, next year, you'll be eligible to leave school for your study hall, but one of the requirements is that you have zero truancies. So if you're not already in the habit of checking if in the campus and looking at your attendance records, I would start that habit now just to make sure that you're all set up for success next year. And with that, I'll pass it over to Dominic Barr. Good evening, everyone. Uh, good to see you. Nice faces out there. Uh, as Brent said, I've been here, it's my fourth year. And uh, the longer I'm here, the, the more I learn organizationally uh, about the ins and outs of how things work and, and the importance of them. And, and one of those really, really important things for all students is our scheduling process. Um, we do have a, an academic planning site, which is uh, in the process of being updated for next school year. Uh, once that is ready to go, we'll communicate that out and you'll be able to access that, that and everything that comes with it. But in the meantime, I did want to talk because um, even though uh, the present is the junior year, there, there is one more year coming for, for all of you students who are here or for, for parents, your son or daughter. And um, the scheduling process is already underway for that. So if you log into IC, the academic planner for next school year is already open. And you can go in there and take a look at what credits remain uh, for, for yourself as a student or for your son or daughter and really plan next school year in terms of what courses uh, and other opportunities they may want to take advantage of. Um, that, that's something that you know, we get uh, a lot of feedback on and, and 
we look at the process every year to try to improve it. And the, the course requests are the driving factor. And I can't stress that enough because, you know, in, in the first three weeks of school here, we've had lots of students, not just juniors, um, come to either their counselor or myself or Ms. Han and try to change their schedule. And you're really kind of left with what's there because the schedule's already built. So in order to ensure that you really get the classes that you want for next year, getting those course requests in uh, to your academic planner uh, before it closes, which will happen sometime in mid-February, and we'll communicate the exact date out as we get closer, is really crucial. Uh, because it does drive the entire building of our schedule from our teacher FTEs to the options that your, your son or daughter will have if they would change their mind after the schedule is all set. So please do take some time, sit down, have a conversation, a cup of coffee, maybe hot cocoa, uh, make a night of it and talk about what they can do to take advantage of all we have to offer here at BC. That's all I got. Thank you. So, yeah, so the, you know, the course, our schedule is totally driven by course requests. Um, so that's something that's very, very important for students to really think long and hard about the classes they want. Now for you guys, you're just thinking one year out. Uh, certainly uh, the, the counselors will talk about graduation um, uh, requirements and things of that nature, but really start thinking about what you want to do. And a lot of you have already done that, what you want to do beyond BC. And the way I look at it as, as principal and as a parent, certainly there's things that you're gonna take during your junior and senior year that you think that you maybe wanna do after BC. Um, and sometimes you get validated, like, yes, that is something I have an interest. And then there's sometimes they're like, no, I don't wanna do that at all. And that's good too, um, because that saves a lot of money, saves a lot of time after BC as well. So really start thinking about this is this is the springboard for you being after BC. And whether that's college, whether that's apprenticeship, whether that's military, whether that is um, just going into the, the, the all important workforce, those are the things that you really need to be thinking about, not just checking off as to what you wanna do to, to fill your day. The academic planning site should be up and running towards late October. We're updating it from uh, to get everything current uh, for the for the next school year, but really starting uh, starting in late October and November, um, the, the counselors and administration will be really working on the scheduling and the academic planning for next school year. Uh, we're very fortunate at BC to have three uh, outstanding uh, support teams in terms of parents: the PTO, the Booster Club, and Applause, and. Um, Proud to introduce uh, Diane Nemchek. She is the, the president of PTO, and she's going to talk to you about uh, what the PTO can do uh, for BC. Diane? Thank you. Hello. I am here tonight just to ask all of you, um, if you've not already done so, to please join the PTO. Um, the membership donation is $25, and with that money, um, some of the things that we can do with that is award grants to the teachers to fund non-budgetary items for their classrooms. We host numerous staff appreciation events throughout the school year. We also put on the junior post prom party, the graduation senior send off celebration, along with funding a $1,500 scholarship for a senior who is a um, whose family is a member of the PTO. Uh, the PTO also runs the Spirit Rock, which is located in the back of the school, and that's an opportunity for students and families to sign up, paint the rock with a positive message. Um, you can join the PTO in two ways, either through the PTO website via PayPal or on the Infinite Campus registration site under the school store tab. Our meetings are the second Tuesday of the month at 930 here at the school and everybody is welcome to attend. It's just a great way to get to know people, find out about some volunteer opportunities and get involved in the school. As far as volunteering, we could use a couple junior parents um, who would be willing to help plan the post prom party for your junior. So if that's something you think you might want to do, we get started early, the planning has already begun and we could use some uh, parents who would be excited and willing to help. And if you'd like to just give me an email at the address right up there or if you have questions about what that involves, just shoot me an email. Thank you so much. Oh. 
the precise type. John Schnabel for Booster Club. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is John Schnabel, and I'm the uh, new president of the BC Booster Club. And our mission is to financially support unfunded or underfunded needs of BC athletics and band. Since 2016, through indirect and direct support, has led to over $450,000 of support for athletics and band. Uh, such things as help with the new scoreboards, scholarships that we give out every year, equipment for the training room, team gear, weight room equipment, field repair. Those are just a few examples of the type of things that we provide support for here at BC. How do we raise money? Well, we do it through number one, memberships. We have levels that go from 400 to 200 dollars. Um, you can do it in Infinite Campus, once again, in the school store like PTO, as well as our page on the BC Athletics page. You can also get access to join as well, or we can, um, I can feel free to take your membership outside this evening. Uh, concessions for the sports that happen. We do raise money for sports and for Booster Club through that. Our annual golf outing, which is in mid-August each year. Next year, it'll be August 14th. And then uh, usually once or twice a year, we'll do a drive for your school event through and with Soren's Ford. How can you help? Well, become a member. Help out with concessions when they're happening with your team. Participate in the events that we have, such as the drive for your school event, our golf outing, tailgate, and other things. And we also have volunteer opportunities as well. So if you're interested, please send me an email and I can tell you all about those. Our meetings are the second Monday of every month from 7 to eight typically here in the library and you're more than welcome to attend and once again any questions send me an email thank you very much and now i'd like to introduce sarah field with applause sarah field and i'm here representing applause which is the fine arts booster club here at brookfield central we support the band choir orchestra musical theater dramatic theater and visual arts um, since 2017, we've given over $53,000 in gifts to the Fine Arts of BC. Just a few examples are a synthesizer for the band, seating for the Black Box Theater, a portable keyboard for choir, props for the theater, speakers for the orchestra, iPads and Apple pencils for visual arts, and each year we give senior scholarships. Last year we gave $2,500 worth of senior scholarships to three seniors. Um, if you're interested in learning more, please visit our website. We're on the BC website. If you go to the Families tab, I'll also be sitting outside after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Diane, uh, John, and, and Sarah. Uh, <clears throat> our goals for the school year. Uh, typically, we don't talk about our goals in, in this type of setting. This is something we work with teachers. But uh, last school year, uh, traditionally, schools, we, we set a goal just for the next school year. And um, we decided to, to change that and make it a three-year plan. And the, the work that we do, not only in PD days, but staff meetings, and really the staff learning that we do together uh, for the next three school years will be all around these four, four, uh, four goals. Uh, first one for, for our staff is PLCs, and those are professional learning communities. That's where teachers of uh, typically, same subject, we'll, we'll meet on a weekly basis to talk about lesson design, talk about assessment, talk about ways that they're reaching all their students. So they work in teams. You know, schools are, are interesting places because you can be around people all day. And this is probably very similar in many other workplaces, but in schools, you know, we got 1,200 kids here, uh, 100 adults uh, in whether teaching and other staff, but you can be somewhat isolated. Uh, because people's schedules are different, the, the coming and going, you can you know, be around people all day, but certainly isolated in terms of uh, the work that you're doing in terms of creating lessons for, for your students, because the, the, next, the, the next goal there is lesson design. Lessons are the, the most difficult work that, that teachers do on a daily basis. To create a quality lesson that meets the needs of all learners is incredibly difficult. And on top of that, we are really focusing on that every day, kids will read, write, and collaborate in every class. We know that certainly is easier in a, a social studies class than a PE class. We get that. 
Uh, but certainly we want to look at ways that we can make sure that kids, no matter what class they're going to, they're reading, writing, and collaborating every day. So those would be the, the three, two top goals that we have for the next three school years. Next one is to utilize Lancer block and Lancer link time um, as effectively as possible. Because we're taking 40 minutes out of the day. That block is 34 minutes, but you add in a six minute passing period. You're taking 40 minutes of the day out of the academic setting. So we wanna make sure that we're using that 40 minutes to its fullest capacity. So Lancer block students have the opportunity to to self-select where they need to go, to uh, whether it's to, to make up something or to get support from a teacher. Teachers also have the opportunity to select a student and assign them to their Lancer block. Uh, so that is Monday through Thursday. We wanna use that time very, very effectively. Then on Thursday, on, excuse me, on Fridays, we have Lancer link. Lancer link, uh, when we were in school, parents, we, we called it maybe homeroom. And that's an opportunity for, for teachers to really connect with other students or connect with students that they maybe don't even have in class. So in each Lancer link is four freshmen, four sophomores, four juniors, four seniors. And when the seniors graduate, we bring in four new students into, into that Lancer link. Uh, so it's an opportunity for kids to, to get to know other kids, for teachers to <clears throat> create a relationship um, because they're gonna be on a week to basis, a week to week basis. And what we find is that Kids, in order to have a sense of belonging, need to make sure that they have at least one trusted adult here. Now, many kids have many trusted adults. Um, many kids make, make connections with other kids and staff very, very easily. And so for many kids, that's so it's a challenge. And we recognize that challenge that kids, um, you know, going back to teachers can be isolated here. Uh, kids can be isolated as well. And our, our, maybe our most important goal is the staff and student belonging. We want to make sure kids, when they walk into the school, that they feel like this is their home. Every school year, we give a survey, and we come up with about 85% of our kids feel like they belong. Now, if that's a you know, shooting percentage in basketball, yeah, that's pretty great. Um, you know, 85%, that's a lot of kids that feel like this place is, is their home, but 15% don't. So that's our challenge, to find how can we get those other 15% or that 15% to feel like BC is their home. Now, BC is a beautiful place. We have kids from, from all over the world, different religions, different cultures, different backgrounds, the list goes on and on. But in the end, we are all Lancers. And when kids come into this building, they need to be in the proper academic setting, proper academic setting. We recognize that there's kids at all different levels and we have different classes, not only for, for rigor, but also for, for interest level. So we wanna make sure kids have that proper place academically. And we also wanna make sure kids have that proper place, whether it's for athletics, activities, or clubs. You know, it's interesting. 85% of our kids feel like they belong here. 85% of our kids are either in one activity or sport. So how can we grow that number so it's up to 100%? And, for, and, and lastly, maybe most importantly, they know that when they come here, they're gonna be cared for. They're gonna be taken care of, you know, as parents, that's what we want. We want our kids to be taken care of. We know there's gonna be bumps in the road, but in the end that we know that there's gonna be people there, not only staff, but fellow students that are caring for each other. That's how we'll achieve the belonging, that 100% of our kids have a sense of belonging. So those are our goals, not only for this year, but for the upcoming school years. It's important work. Um, it's difficult work, but, but, it's, but it's essential work. So that is all from, for, from our part. And I'm gonna turn it over to Leah Devine. Leah Devine's gonna take you through kind of the academic planning and other things that the, the junior year in Avon entails. So Leah Devine. Hi everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. Um, we love seeing all of your faces here. You know, it's been, been a while. So I really appreciate you all coming out. Um, so I'm here to kick off the student services portion of tonight's presentation. Um, first, I'm just going to go over student services staff. So like Mr. Gritzmacher said, I'm Leah Devine. I am the school counselor for students with last names A through F. Um, we also have Mrs. Primo, who's currently out on maternity leave, but her sub name is Mrs. Jansen, and she comes to us from Cedarburg. So she's wonderful. Um, so if your child has Mrs. Primo, typically as a counselor, Mrs. Jansen will be subbing for her. Um, we also have Mrs. Heather Lemke, 
right up here in front. She's a school counselor with students lessons, LI through RI. And then Mr. Crow up here, um, he's the school counselor for students with lessons, RO through Z. And the our Calendly links got a little messed up on here, kind of in conjunction with our email addresses, but that is the link that students will use and parents can use as well to make an appointment with us. Um, we also are lucky enough tonight to have Ms. Natalie Ferschel with us. She is the friendly face of student services. Um, so students, parents, when you walk into student services, she is the first face that you'll see. Um, she's wonderful and she's our student services admin assistant. Um, a couple ways to stay informed with all the happenings in student services. So we try really hard to keep our Twitter page updated. It's a great way to see a quick snapshot of updates um, happening within student services, whether that be like testing, scholarships, things like that, um, opportunities for your students. We also um, have our student services page on the BC website. There's a lot of information on this page, um, whether that be like academic planning, like Mr. Bauer was talking about before, scheduling information, um, information on uh, early college credit, start college now. We'll go over that in a little bit, um, opportunities for students. So please um, take a little bit of time and peruse that website uh, if you have a moment. Like I said, there's lots of great info on there. All right, this is a very important reminder because juniors, you should already be checking your email daily. Um, we talked about the most important icons to have up on your Chromebook at all times with you. I know we did last year for sure. Um, and your email is one of those. So please always have your Gmail open. This is how teachers will reach you. This is how your counselor will reach you um, if we have important information for you. Um, this is also an important um, tool to have up for reaching out to your teachers or reaching out to your counselor. Um, so for example, going back to getting an email from us, if I schedule a meeting with one of my students through Google, um, I will add it to my Google Calendar and I will add their email to that Google invite. So then they get an email saying, hey, you have an appointment with Mrs. Devine at two o'clock on Tuesday. Um, if my student doesn't check their email, they won't know they have an appointment with me. Um, and I might have some good, good information for them. I might really need to meet with them about something. Um, so yeah, just be sure you're checking your email. Um, Parchment is also mentioned on here as well. So students, when you are applying to schools, um, your senior year, you will create an account on Parchment to send your final transcript. A little bit of information, we'll go over that a bit later, but you will use um, your personal email to create that Parchment account and not your school email. All right, junior year, quick timeline. Um, in a couple weeks, months, we'll be meeting with our juniors at, toward the beginning of the year um, to go over graduation, um, exploring options, building your resume. Um, winter, I mean, you can see the timeline that's up there. So it's kind of nice, it's nicely laid out for you um, just with the things that you're going to need to be doing this year to prepare for your senior year. All right. Here's more in-depth snapshot. So a couple really important dates that are coming up soon. Students, if you are scheduled for the PSAT, the PSAT is going to be on October 13th. Um, so that's one of the important dates that is coming up um, for, for you juniors if you are scheduled for that. Um, also keep an eye and ear out for job and college fairs. We'll be talking about that later. And then as your year goes on, you'll be taking the ACT in March, um, which is required for all juniors, the statewide exam. Um, AP exams at the end of the year and so on and so forth. Again, Mr. Gritzmacher is sending this out. So this might be a good thing to print out and keep on your fridge um, just so you are abreast of what is going on. Um, students, if you are being recruited for a college or if you're planning on participating in sports in college, please um, register with the NCAA this year. Um, this helps the NCAA to know what kinds of classes you're taking um, in high school so that they can tell you if those classes will qualify you to participate as an athlete in college. Um, also, NCAA registration is required. You can see the um, requirements listed on the left side of this screen here. And last, before I turn this over to Mr. Girl, scheduling for senior year. Um, last year, students, all the counselors came into your English classes and we talked to you about scheduling. We opened up your academic and career plan with you in IC. We walked you through the classes that you need for your junior year um, and looked at all of your schedules and made, helped you to make sure that you have all of the required courses in your academic planner. Um, this year, we will be doing that as well in January and February. 
So feel free now, students um, and parents, if you want to sit alongside your child while they do this, to open up that academic and career planner in IC and start plugging in some classes uh, to see what courses you would be interested in taking next year. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Grell. Welcome juniors and junior families. Junior year is a pivotal year. Just think about it, a hop, skip, and a jump from now, late summer, early fall, you'll be making some decisions and doing some applications for post-secondary options. So junior really is like the top layer of an admission sandwich right after the ketchup, mustard, and onions, and you can tell I'm getting hungry. So uh, I'm gonna talk about graduation requirements and I wanna highlight something here. It's important to double check to be on track to graduate. And another reason that it's important, and some of my colleagues are going to talk about some pretty incredible options that are going to be available for you, possibly early college credit, dual enrollment. I have some students that want to graduate early or need to graduate early. All those things are in place because the students have made sure that they're on track to graduate. So when we're looking at our graduation requirements. All our requirements are the minimal requirements for every single two and four year college that's out there. You need 24 credits to graduate and certain required classes to be on track to graduate also. So what I did differently this year, everything's up there, you're gonna get the presentation, is I listed down some of the top questions that come up to us counselors about the graduation requirements. So one is, do I need to count my electives? No, not really. If you got 24 credits and you got everything on the board from English to financial literacy, you automatically have enough electives. Those extra years of math, science, art, you name it, those all count as electives. Do I only need three years of math? Yes and no. Yes to graduate. However, if I'm thinking about going on to a college, many of them want to see or require to see math your senior year. I was talking to a parent after the last presentation and said, my student already double accelerated math. They got four years of math. And I said, well, what do they want to do? They want to go into a STEM field. I said, well, they're going to be pretty hard pressed to get into a college if they have no math their senior year. What are fine and practical arts? Fine arts are art classes, music classes, practical arts are business classes, computers, family and consumer education, applied tech. You only need one credit for all of your stay at high school. So I had a freshman completed small engines and art medals one. They got this requirement done. It's already checked off. When is the first time to do personal finance? Junior year. So many of you already have that in your schedule. Do I need a world language to graduate? No. However, I'm thinking about going into a liberal arts degree, more than likely the college I go to is gonna require a language. So often colleges recommend, or some colleges are requiring for liberal arts, two years of a single consecutive language. If I am taking courses outside of Brookfield Central, one student was taking a health class to BYU, what do I need to do? In order to be part of your Brookfield Central transcript, not only do you have to have the outside coursework form approved, but we need your transcript. So make sure that you get that to us before the end of this year so your transcript looks really sound before you start applying to things in the fall. Now, in addition to these, there's an additional graduation requirement. It's the Wisconsin Civics exam. And as I look over the crowd over here, I can see some people who have completed it and some people who still need to do it. There are four modules, 25 questions. You only need a 65 to pass. So if I get a 65 or I get a hundred, the same thing shows on your transcript, pass this requirement. You find it in Canvas. You could go home and take it tonight if you're really ambitious. You can take it at any time. Here's an interesting thing. You really can't fail this requirement. Why? because you can take it as many times as you need or like until you pass. So students that I reach out and say, hey, you haven't completed the civics exam, it's probably because they haven't started it. I had a freshman who completed the civics exam in two hours. So it's a very doable requirement. And again, you just need a 65. 
Now, we talked about graduation and making sure that you're on track. There's actually a tool in Infinite Campus that all of you have access to. So if you log into Infinite Campus and click on Documents, you'll get something on the bottom that says Academic Plan Progress Report. When you click on that, you'll get a screen that looks like this. You don't have to do anything with the screen except to hit the bottom on the bottom that says Generate the Report. When you do that, you'll have a screen that looks like this. So this is one of the seniors. Green means go. So we can see very clearly the student has everything they need. They have all their graduation requirements, all the graduation required classes, and they completed the civics exam. P credit option, that's something available to juniors and seniors, and there's lots and lots of questions on it. So I'm hopefully gonna try to answer those. Anybody who's in a WI sanctioned sport, any level, or in approved activity, I have students that are black belts, uh, equestrians, dancers. What I can do is I complete the pre-credit option form, and here's the key part, swap out a core graduation requirement for a PE class. And the core class that I'm swapping out has to be beyond my graduation requirements. So for instance, I got a student in the schedule taking AP BC Calculus, wants to take AP Stats. If we put AP Stats in, there's no room for a PE class. The student's a tennis player. So the student said, you know what? I'm gonna do the PE credit option. I'm gonna put down AP Stats and that fits good with the student's schedule. I have other students that go, I really like PE. I do really well in PE and PE helps bump up a GPA. They're deciding not to do this form. So if this is something you would like to do, it's that swap part that often gets people confused. It has to be beyond the graduation requirements. We need three years of math. The student was doing number four. Schedule changes. Mr. Bauer talked about the in-depth process with scheduling. I wanna go over what happens if students are looking to make a change now and what's available to them. So all schedule changes must be completed through a schedule change form and any student can pick that up in student services. The first five days of any term, you can drop down from an honors class to a regular class, provided there's a regular class available there. You have up to three weeks when a term starts and six weeks for alternating days to drop a class for a study hall if you don't have a study hall in your schedule. And once a term starts, typically you're not able to add a class anymore. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Mrs. Lundy. Good evening, everybody. Congrats, juniors. We're over 50% there now, right? Like, and we've got a few days under the belt. Um, so, uh, some actually, I'm just really curious is there anybody in here who's already in launch this year? They're starting their launch strand. Anybody? Got a couple. Awesome. Nice. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with the program, launch is one of these opportunities that has opened up for students of this age. Junior year is the first year you can enroll in a launch course. The big takeaway about what launch is. The idea is we're launching kids into those connections that they can make and have with mentors in our community, people who are experts in their field. Um, at this point, gosh, we have what, 10, is it 10 launch strands, 12 launch strands? There's a lot of launch strands. We've got, um, yep, and I see people using your, your uh, cameras to scan this QR code. If you go to this link, it outlines all of them, but we've got things in media solutions. This year we launched law and public policy, um, data analysis, I, we've gotten to the point that it's hardy. It's like naming the seven dwarfs. I, I know them, I recognize them, but I can't always name them all at the same time. Um, we've got our longtime returners in global business and business analytics, um, our teacher education strand. There are so many ways that if kids have a passion and interest and really want to start getting some experience to, as Mr. Gritzmacher said earlier, save some time and money in their next steps later, they can get those experiences through Brookfield Central. So we'll go and dig in a lot harder to this um, in January and February when we start meeting with students about scheduling their senior year. But this is a great time to start having those conversations, exploring, learning more. Students, ask your friends. There's a couple people in here who are in a launch strand, and I know there's many, many more. We have our biggest enrollment yet in launch this year. Um, Dual Enrollment Academy is another opportunity that comes up for seniors in their or students in their senior year specifically. And I really wanna highlight this one because I think it sometimes falls by the wayside. Um, I'll tell you a little story about one of my students. I just saw her in the parking lot uh, before uh, this meeting tonight. 
and she graduated high school last year, got a scholarship um, for several thousand dollars per year renewable to continue on at a technical school, and had the vast majority of her welding degree done before she even graduated high school. So she had job offers. Um, she's all set up to move forward in her career. And it's a passion for her. I went to her graduation party and she had just these beautiful pieces that she had welded. Some were artistic, some were functional. Um, and she is set because she took advantage of dual enrollment academy because her interest happened to align with one of the strands that's listed. So um, WCTC has the ones that are listed up here on this slide. Um, all great programs and what they look like is students essentially spend the majority of their day at WCTC taking this coursework um, for approximately 17 to 18 credits per program. And then during fourth block, they still have the opportunity to come back to BC and either finish up some of their grad requirements here or just take classes that appeal or not. Um, MATC also has a dual enrollment academy. Um, I have a student this year doing the practical nursing program, which is really exciting for her because it's huge money savings for her. She's gonna be on her way into a program um, and she is super passionate. She wants to be a neonatal nurse and she's gonna spend this whole year getting ready for that. She's even gonna to get to check off her English requirements. So she doesn't have to take any more high school English. Her college English is gonna to count towards that last graduation requirement for her. So again, similar setup, still access during fourth block to BC. Kids you know, still do their sports, their clubs, their activities. And yet they're also getting this awesome leg into um, their post-secondary education and saving some money because we're paying for this. Um, the big thing I would say is if you're considering this, the deadline to watch out for in December, we usually invite reps in to talk about it more specifically and we will survey students so we can especially invite those who are interested. Um, and then the application deadline usually falls in February. Early college credit program and start college now. So let's say I just piqued your interest with those last two slides, but the topics or the areas of study were not that interesting. Maybe there's something else you're thinking of. We have opportunities for students to take classes of any type as long as they are not offered already by Brookfield Central. Um, and again, we will pay for them, the district pays. So um, this year, I had a student tell me she wants to take a ballet class as a senior. And that's a class that UW-Milwaukee offers. And so she can apply to be able to take that class as long as we can make it work for her. Um, we would pay for it and she would go to UWM and get college credit for ballet as well as high school credit if she wanted it. And that's true for pretty much any college class. We have kids who take math classes. We have kids who take genetics classes. You name it, the interest is there. And if we can make it work for them, we will. Um, so all of the links on this page really start digging into that process. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little cumbersome, and that's because we are having to navigate both the institution of Elmbrook and the institution that the student is trying to attend. So sometimes schedules can be tough to navigate. It definitely takes multiple conversations and multiple meetings. We do lean on the students to do a lot of the legwork because no two students are going to go through the exact same thing. Um, so it does take time. But if this is right for you as a student, huge opportunity, highly encourage you to take advantage. Um, Timeline-wise right now, if you are still trying to sneak in a college class at let's say UWM or MATC in the spring of your junior year, the deadline would be coming October 1st. Um, Ms. Herschel, can you remind me again, what's the date for the- September 22nd at 5 p.m. Okay, so on uh, September 22nd at 5 p.m., there's also gonna be a webinar that digs in like really deeply to this topic and helps walk through the actual process for applying. So if that's something that you're interested in, that will definitely be in Mr. Gritzmacher's weekly update as well. So you'll see that in the same publication that this is released in. Sorry, that just came out and so it didn't make it into this slide deck. Um, and then maybe your other question is, okay, well, that's cool. I could take this college course, but what if I don't wanna go to WCTC or I don't wanna go to UWM? The next link, Transferology, helps you in trying to determine what courses specifically might transfer to other institutions that you're interested in. So that's the next step of this process. Um, Mrs. Farley would call it being a consumer of your education. Um, and it's also just that very real world feeling. So trying to check out your options, see which one makes the most um, sense for how you spend your time. And all, all of us are available to meet with you. We know it's complicated. We'll help walk through it with you. Um, and those of you who have Mrs. Primo, please lean on one of the rest of us as well. Um, we're well-versed in the ECCP and start college out processes. 
All right, ACT. Hey, it's junior year. We get to do that. I know you're thrilled. <laughs> um, so March 8th is our big day. That's the day that we pay for the ACT for you. We host the ACT for you. You just have to show up on time, ready to take it in your best self. Um, no registration is necessary. We'll call you down before that and help you get your account set up. Um, the big thing about this is it is a live score that you can choose to send off if you decide to. Um, I would, I guess, highlight a lot of colleges are still in their COVID freeze, where even for this class, as you're applying um, to four-year and two-year colleges, the vast majority are still test optional right now, which means if your score comes out good and you really you like it, you feel like it fits you, you can send it. And if you're not loving it, for most places, you don't necessarily have to send it. You just have to check on it because it differs by institution. Um, test prep, there's a couple links on this page as well. Um, if you decide that's the route you wanna go, there are definitely ZAPS and Wisconsin Test Prep usually have some on-site opportunities available. So going to those websites would tell you what dates and what times those are. There's also free opportunities available as well. If you think back to the slide Mrs. Devine presented about our student services website, they are listed under college readiness. And then there's a uh, standardized test prep page. Um, circling back to PSAT, if you want to check that out, there's PSAT resources on there. If you're involved in an AP class, which I'm about to talk about, there's resources there too. So AP testing is related to AP classes. So if you are a student who this year, either first or second semester or both, has any class that's designated AP something, there will be an opportunity for you in May to take a test that would let you codify that you know that subject well. They're scored on a one to five scale. Usually scores of three or higher may confer college credit um, depending on the institution. Um, no matter what, whether you take the test or not, you are still getting a rigorous course experience. Every AP class is taught at the intro college level. So just that experience, just that success there, just that hard work, you're telling people something about yourself um, if you chose to take that on this year. Um, but for those of you who are interested in also translating that to college credit, you would need to take the AP test for that course. Um, those Again, those come up in May, those first two weeks in May, but the timeline that College Board imposes on us to register means that if you're in that class right now, like you're currently attending it, we actually are going to start registering and paying for those exams really soon. Those teachers are going to start talking to you. Um, I will be sending out information as AP coordinator. That's coming. Um, the big date to kind of earmark is November 5th is the last day that we want to close down our testing registration. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, but College Board charges us $40 if we register you late. And they also are going to charge us $40 for your test if you don't use it, which means if we order it for you, and then the final deadline of November 15th, that's College Board's deadline, but we're trying to get ourselves done early so we can follow up with you. Um, but if you change something after November 15th, you guys are going to, I'm sorry to pass it on, but you'd have to be dinged that $40. So now is a great time to start thinking about that decision making process, which is why we wanted to provide you resources to think about it. Um, so the AP credit policy search link is on here. You can click on that, look up different schools you might be interested in and see what their passing scores are and how that translates. All right, um, I mentioned a lot of this, but it summarizes those dates. And just a quick reminder, since you guys are only juniors, no need to send your scores anywhere right now. They are only dealing with college credit. So you don't actually wanna send your scores until you know what college you're gonna attend. So that's gonna be, May, June of your senior year. And actually even later, because if you take another test next year, you want to wait until July when you get those test, back, test scores back too. I know that's a lot. That's the really small version of this. You're going to get much more detail for those of you who are in an AP class, but I think it's a good time to just start that thinking process. All right, this is divine. Hi again, everyone. Um, so I'm here to wrap up our presentation tonight with some um, resources and opportunities for our juniors this year. So our 2021-2022 um, post-secondary experience goes live this Friday. Um, so it is again, like last year, a virtual experience. Um, we had a lot of really great feedback 
um, about our virtual experience last year. This enables people to um, access these sessions. So each of the um, links on here is a pre-recorded session by an expert in um, any of these fields. So for example, UW-Madison, we have an admissions expert from UW-Madison um, who has recorded a lot of great information um, about Madison, about the application process, about what you need, about what you think you might need, but you probably don't really need. Um, so all of these sessions, like I said, go live on September 17th, so this Friday, um, and this information will be sent out to all of you. Um, so this would be really helpful students for you to watch, um, but also for parents to watch alongside your students. Um, lots of really great information. Students interested in military options um, after high school, we have all of our recruiters listed on this slide here. So please, if you are a junior and you are thinking about going into the military, um, please reach out to the recruiter in your particular area of the military and also think about taking that ASVAB exam soon. Um, so you can do that at Mets in Milwaukee. Um, that's just a requirement for, for the military and your recruiter will let you know about that as well. College, colleges and reps visiting BC. So I say this during every presentation, but we have so many colleges and reps visiting us. I went on our website, I'm familiar with our student services website. Um, I pulled up all of the colleges and reps visiting BC and I thought to myself, this is from last year. This, there's no way we already have this many colleges and reps coming to BC to meet with our students or meeting virtually or in person, but we do. Um, and Ms. Herschel in the front here organizes all of those um, visits for us for these college reps. And it's so, so good for our students um, to have access to all of these people from all of these different universities. So um, please students visit our student services webpage to see the calendar of when these reps are going to be here. Um, and then see Ms. Herschel or send her an email and say, hey, I'm interested in seeing this person and we'll get you signed up to meet with them. If you are unsure of your plan, that is okay. We have lots of resources here for you if you are unsure. Um, one of our greatest resources is Mr. Chris Mancheski. Um, he is our career coach who is here every other Wednesday. He was just here today, um, so he won't be here next Wednesday. He'll be at Eve, but the following Wednesday, he'll be back here at BC. Um, he meets with our students, walks them through with their options, gets a feel for what they're interested in, what they're good at. Um, and he gives them um, some really, really good resources and ideas for things that they can not only do during high school to get them to where they want to be after high school, but also ideas for after high school as well. Um, so yeah, like I said, every Wednesday, um, we have a, well, I should say yes, every Wednesday we have appointments available. If he is at EAP, you can register for a virtual appointment. If he is here, it will be in person. Um, so please email your counselor to set up a time on Mr. Manchesky's calendar, or you can access it through this link on this page. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about Zello. So juniors, you are probably familiar with Zello. It is a phenomenal career exploration resource. Um, you've been using it since you were at Hill, but that is where you went to school. Um, they have the matchmaker, which can show you, um, you answer all these questions, and then it can show you careers that might be of interest to you, things that might speak to your abilities and your skills. Um, so a really great resource that you have at your fingertips. So if you go to My Elmbrook um, in the top right, right hand corner of the BC webpage, um, you will have your icon for Zello. You just click on it, you can go right in there. It's awesome. And parents too. Um, we have an option now for parents to access Zello, which might be helpful when you're sitting down with your child um, or maybe for you to explore some things like, hey, have you thought about this career, I saw this on Zello, then your child can log in and you can do it together. Um, so this QR code, you can create your parent account or accessing the tiny CC on this page. Um, again, Mr. Chris Mocker is going to be sending out this presentation and recording in his weekly update. Um, so you will have all this information at your fingertips as well. So with that, we are finished for the night, but the counselors and student services staff will be up here in the front to answer any questions that you all have. Thank you all for coming. I know it's late. Really appreciate it. Uh, have a great night.